From Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, and the historic Ashworth by the Sea Hotel, it's Politics in Progress. With your host, Charlie Sherman. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Politics in Progress. I'm Charlie Sherman. We come to you each Sunday morning from the Ashworth by the Sea here on Hampton Beach. And we've got plenty to talk about this morning. Let's get right into it. But first, let me introduce our panel for this morning, our esteemed panel, starting on my right from Elever Communications, our Republican analyst this morning. The one and only Rich Killian joins us. Good morning, Great Rich. Great to be here, Charlie. Thank you. Our Democrat this morning, the former state senator from Newcastle and other parts out there on the seacoast, Bert Cohen joins us. Good morning. Thanks very much. Appreciate being here. It's good having you. Fun. And also a former longtime colleague of mine, now the president of Spradling, the, the Spradling Group, <laughs> and the former political director for Channel 9, Scott Spradling. Good morning. How are you doing, Charlie? Good to have you all with us this morning. All right, let's get right to it. There's a lot of things to talk about. Let me start off, what else? Health care. So uh, the latest, here we go. Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, intends to present a unified redrafted health care reform bill next week. The head of the House Democratic Caucus said that uh, John Larson said the new bill would meld together parts of legislation written and approved in July by the House Education, Ways and Means and Energy and Commerce Committees. Uh, he cautioned against people reading this as the last step in a long health care journey for the House, saying the result will not be the final bill, but a refined bill. As the back and forth continues, especially over the so-called public option, there are some skeptics wondering how Speaker Pelosi will secure the necessary votes to pass the bill without alienating at least one branch of her caucus. Rich, let me start with you. Is this thing going to die, or are we going to finally see something? Now the Speaker wants to rewrite things. This thing just keeps going on and on. This is suffering under its own weight, and the own weight is the huge uh, cost implications which we see in it. The uh, public option itself uh, is one which the base of her party uh, is really demanding of being in there, and that's a huge cost driver. And that's going to be a huge escalative cost driver, which really would, I think, take something which is one-seventh of our e economy right now and put it on steroids. And I think what we need, Charlie, is look at other elements that if, if she's going to move forward in this fashion, there's other implications, is what's the impact for New Hampshire? If they're going to take the current uh, program on Medicaid and maybe bring it to 133% above the poverty level, there are huge implications towards what the state cost could be. That's a, that is a, a mean-tested program. And there's a very complicated formula as to what the state would pay and what the and uh, what the feds would pay, but there's huge implications there, and that's on our dime here in New Hampshire. So I hope it's a long debate because I hope this is something which is is not going to be kind of rammed home and down our throats because there are huge costs for all of us. Well, you talk about costs, though. Ask people in the street about their health care costs. The health care costs are huge right now. Mine is more than my mortgage. It's very, very expensive for a lot of people. I think something's going to come out of this, whether or not there'll be a public option. I don't really know, but something's got to be done about it. I mean, who are the costs to? They're costs to the health insurance industry. Yeah, they don't want competition. They don't want a, uh, a public option to give them any competition. They're in the interest of uh, making money. They're there to make money. And the way they can do that is by denying people coverage. There's been some death panels already. You know, there's been a lot of meta scare that's gone on here, and there are death panels right now. And they're happening in the insurance industry. They're denying people coverage. There's a case of a 17-year-old girl who needed a liver transplant. Cigna denied the liver transplant. She died at age 17. The CEO, Jack Harmon, I believe it is, uh, got a $73 million golden parachute, which would have paid for 292 such liver transplants. She only needed one. We've got to bring the health care costs down for people. There's, there's going to be a democratic plan. I don't know if we'll have a public right. option. It's going to be difficult, but it will bring health care costs down. It'll make it more accessible to people. That's what we need here. And people, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised at the anger at the government here. They're trying to do something for people. And, and the anger really should be at the I health I think you see the anger, story. Senator, with the government being on the fact that it's the issue you first <coughs> brought up, which, which is the containment of costs. What they see in this plan, whether it be with the public option or not, are excise taxes, which could apply on a certain plans, which we uh, uh, 
uh, which could be above eight thousand dollars. That's gonna going right. Nowhere. But you know what? That's why they're mad because that's gonna affect that's gonna affect people in the in the uh, middle class too, and that would go quite contrary to what the promise our president gave us when he campaigned here, which was no no uh, no tax increases on the middle class. And Scott, that type of excise tax would be just that. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's it, tricky. I mean, now the speaker is involved, and, right. and she's trying to take the lead, which is kind of scary in some sense. But are they just desperate to, to try and move something forward? Well, not only that. I mean, look, uh, President Obama has staked a lot of the, of the success of the presidency to this <coughs> point on this one issue. Yes. I mean, he has been working harder on this issue than he did on the economic stimulus plan when he came out of the gates right. in January. Um, we're at a point right now where skepticism and cynicism among the public is very high, not to mention both parties. And we're, we're at a crossroads with this entire debate. And to me, the president's going to effectively have to decide here, is he going to lop off the left and go with a bipartisan plan, however many steps he can get towards the goal line, or is he going to lop off the Republican Party and go with just a Democratic strategy? Because at the moment, he's got it all on the table. If you've got 500 amendments at this point, this is so many different ideas that, that Rich's analogy of collapsing under the, the weight of the plan itself is a very apt description. It's a, it's a huge challenge, and I, on a practical level, see nothing but maybe baby steps coming out of this. Massive reform, I just, I don't see it. I don't see enough agreement. I was talking with John Stephen the other day, the uh, former Commissioner of Health and Human Services here in New Hampshire. His suggestion, throw everything out. Start from scratch. Get a clean slate and let's start taking, as you said, those baby steps again, and let's try and work something that makes sense for everybody. That's not going to happen. I don't think we're going to clean the slate and start with nothing. It, there's going to be something substantive that's going to come out of this, I'm sure. And it's not just the problem that Obama has with the Republicans. You know, there's the left in the Democratic Party, and there's the blue dog Democrats, too, that are giving them a Good hard point. time. Good point. And so one of those two groups, either the blue dogs or the left, is not going to be happy with what comes out of this because the left people are saying there's got to be a public option. Yeah. My guess is there probably might not be a public option at this point in time, but there's going to be something that will bring health insurance costs down. New Hampshire has very high health insurance. The, the rates, the premiums have gone up higher than most states here in New Hampshire. And we have to do something. I think there'll be something of substance here. It's been worked on for way too long. Do you guys see nothing. no public option? Do you think that's possible? Well, I won't say it's impossible, but I think I agree with Bert. I think it's it's a very difficult sell at this yeah, point, and yeah. and I mean, you know, and the, the trick is this, and Rich knows it better than I do. But you have you have members of the House right now that are literally standing on both sides of the fence with the with the weapons drawn, and you've got one mm -hmm. saying, "I refuse to vote yes if right. public option's not in it," yeah, and the other saying, "I refuse to vote yes if the public option's there." And I don't see how you appease either one of those two groups. You've got to say no to somebody. And the president has the votes within his own party to pass the public option if right. that's what they wanted to do. The problem is, is the divide within the party. And Charlie, you may have seen, say, the first crack possibly for him to walk away from the public option and save face within the party. The SEIU at the national level said today they would accept a, a bill without a public option. That's pretty significant. That's big. So, All right. Uh, we do have to take a break. Uh, coming up. We will take a look at, speaking of money, the situation right here in New Hampshire. What are those budget numbers looking like after the first two months, and what can we expect when those September numbers come in? You're watching Politics in Progress. We'll be right back.